Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Wehrman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Monday morning, January 30th, 2023. Only two more days left in January, today and tomorrow. Fear is a liar by Turning Points, all the best. Deuteronomy 121, do not fear. That's all it says. Do not fear. <laughs> we all encounter circumstances in our life which cause us to experience fear. These could be mental, physical, or spiritual struggles. The characters in the Bible were no exception. They too experienced fear. Think of the disciples roll, rowing on the Sea of Galilee or David battling against Goliath. Fear and the courage to conquer it are mentioned often in God's word. But it is important to remember the role of faith in conquering fear. Joshua and Caleb were men of faith. When they and the other spies left Kadesh, Barnaria, Barnaria, I should really know how to pronounce that, should I? <laughs> to enter the land of Canaan and inspect the land that God had given them, their cohorts were afraid. But not Joshua and Caleb. They didn't let their fear keep them from God's plan for the people to enter the promised land, nor did they let fear convince them to disobey his commands. While others rebelled against God, Joshua and Caleb remained steadfast in their faith in God and his promises, and they were eventually blessed because of it. Deuteronomy 121 again and verse 30. Do not fear or be discouraged. The Lord your God, he will fight for you. Reflect upon the promises found in God's word. They will enable you to conquer all your fears. So the story in Deuteronomy is, oh, good Lord, they're at the promised land, finally. <laughs> and um, Joshua and Caleb are supposed to go in and uh, survey it, be spies, to see what's going on in there anyway. And uh, even though God said they will take command of the land, they it will be flowing with milk and honey. God will protect them, all of that. So they spent send in Joshua and Caleb and a cup and I think it's ten spies that they sent in. And so the other ones came back and they're like, "Oh my gosh, you should see the men in there. They're huge like trees, and they are um, fierce in battle. And there's never any way we're going to be able to take over the land." But God said that they would. And so Joshua and Caleb remind the people there to not be afraid. Do not fear because the Lord God will fight for you. So, um, and I think they were encountering the Philistines, my guess. Why is my hair tall on top? <laughs> it's a tall hair day. Um, so, you know, they looked pretty tall. Now, back then, you know, they probably, they might have been, you know, six foot four or five, and that would have been a giant back then because most of the Jewish people were not tall. You know, five foot three, five foot two, men. So um, the women probably were even shorter. So they were afraid of the unknown. They were going into this new territory. Even though it wasn't unknown, God had told them that they would conquer the land and he would be with them and he would give them everything they need and it had everything that they... So they came back and they said, all the, all the spies came back and agreed that the fruit was huge. They'd never seen fruit like this. There was um, water flowing. There were fish jumping. There was all kinds of food available to them. But, but there were some big guys there and they were afraid of the big guys. And so Joshua and Caleb said, again, do not fear. God has told us that he will fight for us. So we can remember that when we're going into something that's unknown, what, unknown, unknown, whether it's a doctor's appointment or a new treatment plan or a new job or, um, Maybe your company's closing and you have to transfer or a new school for your kiddos, whatever it is, um, know that God will fight for you, which means he will fight against the fear that you're feeling, the worry, the stress, if we give it to him. And so I know there's um, people that are in the middle of a move and it's, it's hard um, because their kids are implanted in school, but they need to move for job reasons and now they have to start over again. And so I just encourage those people to remember what Deuteronomy says. Do not fear. God will fight for you. God will fight for your kids to get them friends that they need. God will fight for your um, spouse to get them a job if need be. And uh, God will um, provide a way for you to get through that transition. And um, as a mother, I can attest to that. 
because um, I'm in a itinerant system as a pastor, which means if I want a full-time job, I have to be willing to move. Now, I'm a local pastor, so I don't have to move. However, I may not have a job, especially a full-time job. So, um, not that I'm going anywhere. Nobody's moving me. I haven't heard anything like that. I'm just saying that <clears throat> there's always that opportunity for that to happen. And that's not just in my job. That's in anybody's job. You know, nowadays, you know, jobs come and they go and, you know, companies open and they close and, you know, you have to be willing to get up and move. And me, I'm not too good at that. I'm kind of a homebody. I don't like to move. I had many opportunities to move when I was in my other job and I was just didn't want to. All my family was here and I'm like, why am I moving away to have children with people I don't even know? <laughs> so anyway, God made it work. I've been in the um, local pastor for 10 years, 11 years, 12 years. How long have I been doing this? Let's see. 15. Yeah, 12 years. 12 years? It'll be 12 years in June, July. And um, yeah, so I haven't moved yet. Knock on wood. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the unfamiliar, the unknown, can be frightening. And if there's any hint that there could be something scary there, then we're like, no, no, no. Like the Egyptians, I'm, or like the Israelites, when they were in the wilderness. We want to go back to being slaves. Even though we were beat, at least we had four square meals a day or three square meals a day, even though they were being beat. I know. God will take us to places that are uncomfortable, but he tells us over and over again in the Bible, do not fear. And so Joshua and Caleb were to deliver that message to the people of God. And they went in and they conquered the land of Canaan because it was their promised land by God. So Woodrow Kroll writes, the only known antidote to fear is faith. So faith is um, <clears throat> believing in things, believing in God, even though we can't see God, but know that God is working, God is fighting for us, God is there with us, even in those times of uncertainty. So I hope this was helpful for you today. If you didn't get a chance to get to church yesterday and you want to tune into a service yesterday, I spoke on miracles of protection, shared my own miracle of protection, and um, also talked about what happens when God doesn't provide the miracle of protection. What do we do? And we use the scripture of Paul and Silas in prison. And um, the miracle of protection was not for Paul and Silas. So just so you know, um, take a look, take a listen. You can find it right here. It should be one post above me, or you can go to um, kingsleymethodistchurch.com and you can find um, a link to all of our sermons and messages and all kinds of other cool stuff. So, yeah, be on the lookout. We will be doing a game night coming in February, so everybody's invited to that. Um, we'll have some little snackies for you, and we'll be doing all kinds of games. So bring your Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, bring your magic cards, whatever you want to play. I don't know how to play any of that, but I'm sure there's kids there that do. Uh, we're going to have um, Euchre games going. We're going to have board games going. We're going to have kids games going. And um, we might even do Seen It Disney maybe up in um, the sanctuary. Wouldn't that be fun? I haven't played Seen It on Disney in a long time. But my daughter's got like 15 different kinds, so I'm sure we can find one we'd like. Um, also, I have a community Bible study that's happening. I know it's happening at 3.30, so it have to be for people that either work third shift. What shift is that? <laughs> I don't know my shifts. I used to work the midnight shift, the graveyard shift, at a cherry factory. It was not good for me. <laughs> it's like, I'm better in the morning than I am in the evening. But it starts at 3.30 at our church, and we're going to kick it off by watching The Chosen, because that's what we're going to do, Chosen Season 2. Okay, now season three is out on um, to, to view, and you can view it on the Chosen app, um, or you can, um, uh, yeah, the Chosen app. And I don't think it's in theaters anymore. It was season, or episode one was in theaters. But anyway, I think there's like seven episodes to season two, and season three, I'm not sure, six maybe. Um, and they plan on doing at least seven seasons of um, Jesus' life, so... That'll be interesting. And it's very good. It's modern day understanding um, of Jesus, um, even though it's back when Jesus would have walked the earth. So it's all the 
it's all the um, outfits and, and the customs and the rituals that uh, Judaism has that plays into a huge part of who Jesus is because Jesus was Jewish. So he did a lot of customs and um, traditions that um, Jewish people still do today. Now us as Gentiles, meaning non-Jewish people, unless there's a Jewish person out there watching, hello. Um, we don't usually do those customs anymore, but we've kept some of the traditions and um, not Jewish traditions, but we celebrate um, Passover whenever we do communion. We remember that um, Jesus, we don't celebrate Passover, but we remember what God's people went through and what it took for all of us to be back in relationship with God. And that was a one-time sacrifice of Christ. And so we remember in and through the communion elements that the body and bread of Christ um, are in us. We can take that and experience God's grace for us in a unique way. And that's kind of cool. We call the means of grace, a way for God to, you know, show us his grace in a tangible way, in a symbolic way, through something physical like bread, juice, or for the sacrament of baptism through water. That's all I know. I don't know how I've got off on that tangent. But anyway, so the Chosen Bible Study is open to anybody. We're going to kick it off with Season 2, Episode 1. We're going to go up in the worship space and watch it in the cushy um, pews, and we're going to have some popcorn, and then I'm going to get various little candies that you can put in your popcorn. I said that yesterday at the congregation, and some of them raised their hand, they put candy in their popcorn, some did not. <laughs> what? So um, if your kiddo doesn't have any sports or anything going on after school, um, it'll be Tuesday, February 7th, and it'll be every Tuesday at 3.30, um, and then we'll go into some of the questions for the lesson after that. But this time, it's just a kickoff of the chosen. So even if you don't want to stay for the study for the next weeks after that, you can just come and watch The Chosen, Season 2, Episode 1. It's about an hour. It's free, so bring your kiddos, and maybe they'll get, you know, hooked on Jesus because um, The Chosen really speaks to that young crowd, really makes it um, understandable and um, easy to understand Jesus, and it really shows God, the love of God, compassion of God, and um, the plan of God, all in, you know, easy to follow. Uh, chosen. So that's what I'm going to do starting February 7th and um, 3.30. If I get enough people that want to do something in the evening, I'll do that too. So just give me a <clears throat> either personal message me, private message me, PM me, whatever that means. <laughs> PM means nighttime to me. If you're interested in um, doing the Chosen study or watch it on the Chosen app, used to be the Angel app, but now the Chosen has their own app. So you can just type in the Chosen app, download it, and you can watch it for free. Now you can donate so that you can pay it forward for someone else to watch it for free, and then that money goes for them to continue making the different seasons. Anyway, that's all I know. So we will be having an Easter egg hunt. Um, I believe we're going to have it on Palm Sunday, Palm Saturday. <laughs> The Saturday before Palm Sunday, so the Saturday, Palm Sunday's on a Sunday, the Saturday right there. <laughs> I think it's like, let's see, I don't, I don't even know, I'm looking for my phone. It's right there. Um, I think April, April 9th is um, Easter this year, so it's early, so it'd be like April 2nd or something, That whatever that Saturday is before Easter, that's one, the Saturday before Palm Sunday. Should really have a date and we'll do that at brownson park and we'll <clears throat> have over five six thousand easter eggs and games for the kids and prizes and all kinds of fun stuff and so hopefully if you if you just come and it doesn't matter you can come whoever it's free to the kids and if you don't have a church family maybe you can meet some of the church people and um know that we're not weird <laughs> well it may be a little strange but <laughs> aren't we all somewhat? <laughs> but we just are trying the hardest we can to love Christ, help our community, serve our community, feed our community, and um, be the light of Christ. So that's all I know. I will talk to you soon. Have a good day. Oh, let me pray.
Lord, we thank you for the snow. <laughs> it's cold out, but um, we know that you are with us each and every day. And we thank you, Lord, that even in those unknown times that your word clearly says, do not be afraid, do not fear, I will fight for you. And so that fighting might be a physical fighting. I doubt it. It would probably be a spiritual fighting um, that you will battle against those things that try to steal our sanity, things like fear and worry and anxiety and suicidal thoughts and all of those things. So I just pray for those people out there that need to hear this message and may they share it with someone they know today. In the name of Christ, amen.